back blows for three minutes until oh. baby Ziona finally took a breath. Amazing. Thank goodness for him. Yeah. Next, the bad. Evergreen State College is cutting nearly 50 faculty and staff positions over plummeting enrollment numbers. The plunge coming after these riots over an initiative asking white students to leave the Washington State campus for a day. Finally, the ugly, a truck driver's trip runs afoul when he crashes and spills 40,000 pounds of wet, smelly chicken feathers. Mm. He says he fell asleep at the wheel and crashed, causing a commuter nightmare in Washington state. Traffic engineers estimate 18 million feathers littered the road. Who is estimating the amount of feathers Seriously. individually? 40,000 pounds of feathers. I would not have imagined them being like smelly. Like that's actually gross. I think it rained, it probably rained on them and then they yeah, oh. get a little nasty. Okay, thanks for watching, have a good day. Enjoy your long weekend. Fox and Friends starts right now. I have decided to terminate the planned summit in Singapore on June 12th. I believe that this is a tremendous setback for North Korea and indeed a setback for the world. North Korea's foreign minister said his government is still willing to sit down with the United States. What we're seeing is the art of the deal in action here. A manhunt intensifying uh, for two men, wanted for setting off a bomb, leaving more than a dozen people hurt. Following that blast at an Indian restaurant in Toronto, Canada. Republican leaders demanding more transparency after the Department of Justice holds a fiery meeting on Russia probe sources. But Democrats still insist there is no evidence of a spy in the Trump campaign. Normal Americans understand that when you are gathering information on someone surreptitiously, that's the common definition of spying. And the World War II vet who just got his college diploma surprised with a letter from the White House. You don't get much higher than that, do you? Thank you, Donald. I voted for you. You're looking live from the deck of the U.S. Intrepid Museum on the west side of Manhattan. And that, later on today, will be the origination point for our premiere of our summer concert series brought to you by Keurig. Lee Greenwood is going to be right there on that stage singing his uh, very famous songs. And the beautiful Abby Huntsman is going to be out there, too, talking to some of the sailors and some of the soldiers. It's Fleet Week here, Memorial Day on Monday. We're celebrating America. Yeah, it turns out that Abby's going to be able to load up some of those cannons and just take shots at New Jersey. Really? Yeah. Really? I, I, I saw that in the rundown. Wait a minute, maybe, maybe I should go home. <laughs> the kids and protect your family. <laughs> My goodness. Finally, the New York, New Jersey uh, rivalry will come to a head. Just like that. Uh, so as we kick, yesterday we kicked off Fleet Week, and now we're kicking off the Memorial Day weekend. Thank you very much for joining us. And we start this hour with a Fox News alert. And a man is intensifying right now for two bombers wanted for setting off an explosive inside a restaurant in Canada. Wow, I wonder what's behind this. The bombing near Toronto leaves 15 people hurt with three in critical condition. Todd Pyro has been following this story and he joins us live from the newsroom with the very latest. Todd? Steve, Ainsley and Brian, good morning. Terrifying moments for people at an Indian restaurant in Canada. Police posting this photo on Twitter showing two people with dark zip up hoodies walking into the restaurant with one of them appearing to be carrying something. According to authorities, those men blew up an IED at the restaurant, fleeing the scene afterward. And right now, three of the 15 people injured in that blast are in critical condition at a trauma center. This horrible scene near Toronto at the Bombay Bell restaurant around 10.30 last night. We're uh, asking for people to avoid the area. And of course, if anyone has witnessed anything or has any information in relation to this incident, uh, please uh, contact us. At this point, police say there's no evidence linking the explosion to terrorism or a hate crime. We'll stay on top of it for you and bring you the very latest as soon as we know it. For now, Steve Ainsley, Brian, back to you. All right, Todd, thank you very thank much you, for the latest from the newsroom. The crazy thing yesterday, uh, it was almost like a movie. I'm on the, uh, the radio with John Roberts, and we're talking about the NFL. Right. Uh, and all of a sudden he says, Brian, can you hold on a second? He goes, yes, thank you very much. I've just been handed a letter. It must be important. 
It looks like we are dropping out of the summit. And just like that, mm -hmm. the president dictated a letter in the morning, and the and the, the verbiage he used and the style in which was relayed, he absolutely wrote this letter. Absolutely. The summit is delayed, if not denied, with North Korea. Well, we didn't know behind the scenes, but apparently uh, North Korea had been pulling some shenanigans for a couple of days. We sent an advance team to Singapore to work out some details. They never showed up. So yesterday, the president... Uh, called Kim's bluff, essentially, and citing open hostility with North Korea, he said, you know what? Uh, he needs that more than we do. We're walking away. Listen. I believe that this is a tremendous setback for North Korea and, indeed, a setback for the world. North Korea has the opportunity to end decades of poverty and oppression by following the path of denuclearization. And I hope that Kim Jong-un will ultimately do what is right, not only for himself, but perhaps most importantly, what's right for his people. In the meantime, our very strong sanctions, by far the strongest sanctions ever imposed, and maximum pressure campaign will continue if and when Kim Jong-un chooses to engage in constructive dialogue and actions. I am waiting. Well, wow. the letter is flattering and it is threatening at the same time, reminding them exactly, reminding North Korea that we have we have nuclear weapons and he hopes that he doesn't have to use them. But our nukes are so massive and so powerful, he reminds him. He does thank him for sending home the hostages and just says it's too risky at this time because you seem angry, you seem hostile, because Kim Jong un and North Korea taunted him earlier this week. They said in the statement, meet us at the meeting room or encounter us at a nuclear to nuclear show. Down. The president did not right. like that. He also didn't yeah. like uh, calling the vice president's comments politically dumb. I would also add a couple other things. He didn't like the fact that out of nowhere, the South Korean talks that was supposed to schedule for last week got canceled. And then they start criticizing the military exercises. And you go back to the China meeting where China and Kim Jong-un, the Chinese leader and Kim Jong-un, go to some beach town. And he comes back with a brand new attitude. But I am encouraged somewhat or found it interesting and intriguing that his retort this morning, Kim Jong-un, was like, hey, I'm still open to it. Yeah. The foreign minister and some uh, newspapers overseas right. last night came forward and said, we are open to better relations. What the president also decided yeah, to do right. is not tell congressional leaders and not even tell uh, South Korea that he was going to do this. He did not want this well, leaking out. Brian, he didn't tell Mike Pompeo. It sounds like, according to an item in the Washington Post, it sounds like uh, John Bolton talked him into it. And the president, before you know, winding up with egg on his face that North Korea wasn't uh, it cooperating going in, he pulled the plug, really didn't tell anybody. But here's ultimately what's going on. North Korea didn't think this president was going to do it. No, they They're didn't. so used to getting stuff from us. Right. We, we show up, we negotiate, they get stuff. They just figured it was going to be like that again. No, they overplayed their hand, and now they want to get back in the game. But the president said, too bad. The president says you have to negotiate, and if you're not willing to do that and you're going to continue to be hostile, we're not coming to the table either. And General Tata, he reminds all of us this country is in control, not North Korea. Listen. What we're seeing is the art of the deal in action here. For those who didn't read the book, they get to now watch the movie. And President Trump understands that he is a commander in chief of the most powerful country in the world. And he mentioned 700 billion uh, twice, uh, you know, during his press conference today. And that number is uh, are the size of our defense budget. And this was his strategic messaging to North Korea. He understands the leverage that he has here. And that 700 hundred billion uh, number of our uh, defense budget is 25 to 30 times the size of the gross domestic product of North Korea. Okay, so uh, we're not going to be uh, meeting at the uh, table in Singapore on the 12th. Uh, U.S. officials are warning that uh, North Korea could try to hit us with a cyber attack. Uh, they're also looking for any provo provocative behavior going forward. And you know what the White House has ordered? Let's look at more sanctions. Let's figure out how to put the screws to them a little more 
get the message across, we mean business. It's going to be a crucial 36 hours. Senator Lindsey Graham is here to talk about it. He's mm -hmm. been in communication uh, with the White House. Meanwhile, last night on Tucker Carlson's show, which is, uh, which is you really have to get it uh, and watch it every night and quiz yourself to make sure you understand it, <laughs> uh, Mike Rowe was probably the final guest, at which time they try to build it off of that uh, they, the 30-year-old that wouldn't get out of his house. Like, what has <laughs> happened house. to this generation? Are they not tough? Do they understand about these the man? And child situation right. has to come to a close. Mike Rowe has a scholarship for essentially blue collar workers, people with tremendous work ethics that you get after you graduate high school. And he has a demand, a series of demands before you're even eligible to get the, the right. millions of dollars that he has. Yeah, but here's, here's the thing. He's got money. But the kids today, they don't want to work it's for free it. money. And free he has a money. hard time giving it away. Listen to this. There's some things my scholarship requires you to do that other scholarships don't. You have to write essays and make videos and sign a sweat pledge. And when people are often confronted with these hoops, they take uh, what you call umbrage at that. And I find it, I find it fascinating. I think that probably does have something to do with the expectations that have evolved out of the safe space movement. Safety always would be a delightful bromide, a wise platitude. Safety first is the stuff of idiocy. It allows us to begin to believe that somebody other than us might care more about our well-being than we do. And the minute we buy into that nonsense, yes. then we embrace the warm grip of complacency. My, how times have changed. <laughs> right. Free money, they don't want to work for it. By the way, Brian mentioned that 30-year-old uh, guy who was ordered to leave his house by his parents. His parents took him to court yesterday. They finally decided, the judge did, he's got to be out of the house by June 1st. <laughs> They're giving him one more week, and then that guy's going to have to find a new place and find somebody else to make him Meanwhile, breakfast. he's suing his workplace because they tried to make him work right. on the weekend. Right. Darn Best Buy. And I will say this. There's a lot of 22-year-olds that are watching us now that just, or 18-year-olds that just got out of school or to, I'm more college and are watching. We're not putting all of you down. Right. We're just saying that uh, too many are no. looking for the shortcuts, but the ones that don't well, will this is, really listen, have a chance to shine. Listen, it's a benefit for you guys at home if you're watching and you're a millennial yeah. because you're going to be better than right. anyone else in your group. Just work really hard right. and you won't have as much competition. Like to work as hard as Julian. Exactly. Right. I mean, I work you so hard. You already did hard. a show. <laughs> I work harder than you, Brian. Isn't what? that crazy? I think it is. I think it's true. <laughs> yeah, right. Nobody does. Yeah. All right. Good morning to morning. you. Good morning to you at home. Let's get you caught up on some of your headlines that we're following today. Hundreds expected at the funeral for a Baltimore police officer killed in the line of duty. Amy Caprio run over as she responded to a burglary. First responders escorting her body to a funeral home. The heartbroken community lining the streets, shaking hands with police. They lit candles at 8.14 p.m in honor of Officer Caprio, whose patrol car was number 814. 14s now face murder charges. A school bus driver charged with vehicular homicide in a horrific crash that left two people dead. Huddy Muldrow will face a judge today. Investigators say he made an illegal U-turn on a New Jersey interstate and crashed into a dump truck, killing a 10-year-old girl and a teacher. Muldrow has had his license suspended 14 times. Disgraced Hollywood producer Harvey Weinstein is expected to turn himself in today. He plans to surrender to New York City police and will reportedly be charged with rape. Dozens of women, including celebrities, have accused him of sexual assault and misconduct. Weinstein is also under investigation in Los Angeles, the UK, and by the feds. He has denied the allegations. President Trump presenting a Navy SEAL with the military's highest honor for his brave fight against Al-Qaeda. Now, Brit Slabinski is sharing details of the 2002 rescue mission in Afghanistan, which earned him the Medal of Honor. We landed on top of the mountain. Um, you know, my helicopter took a uh, rocket propelled grenade fire right away. Crawled over the top of John looking for some, some sign of life from him, and I didn't get any. No, no movement, no, no sound or anything from them. Well, I can tell you, I didn't, we left no one behind. Mm. Critics say Sergeant John Chapman was left behind to fight to his death alone. Six other Americans died on the mission. Your headlines. All right. Yeah, Jennifer Griffin did a great interview yeah, uh, with him. Fantastic. American hero. Thanks, Jillian. Yeah. Thank you. All right, 13 minutes now after the hour. Democrats say the DOJ's briefing on Russia backs them up.
There is no evidence to support any allegation that the FBI or any intelligence agency placed a spy in the Trump campaign. Lindsey Graham will be talking about that, uh, he, uh, about the meeting in just a moment. Plus, one woman went into the hospital expecting triplets, but she's leaving with a very unexpected surprise. Can't wait to hear that. And we're kicking off our summer concert series live from the Intrepid Museum today. Abby Huntsman is there live. We're going to check in with her. Good morning, Abby. Good morning, everybody. You're next. It was relatively abrupt. It happened yesterday morning, and the president just decided after getting up and sleeping on it Wednesday that he will no longer uh, be looking for a Singapore summit on June 12th. What went into that decision? Senator Lindsey Graham spoke to the president. Well, might be seeing him again this weekend. Yeah. Senator, I was shocked to get that letter. Yeah. I knew things weren't on the right track. I didn't know they were on the no track. When did you know? Well, I found out about 24 hours ago. I, I think the president did the right thing. Number one, everybody who's criticizing the president, regarding the letter how well did you do in north korea we finally got a president who has their attention they're playing the same old game they played for 30 years and trump's not going to tolerate it so i think the letter was the right decision here's what you need to understand about north korea and president trump he made a decision early on with it within his first 30 days being in office that i'm going to end the north korean nuclear threat to our country and the world at large the only question now is how and when it's not if it's how and when he prefers to do it diplomatically. We hope to have a win-win where we sit down with North Korea, we end the Korean War, we provide them the security and the economic prosperity they need and want, and they give up their nukes. They don't understand something you just said, that the president will end this, this problem in his first it's term. Not in my belief, he will. So it's not if he ends the North Korean program, it's how and when. There's two ways. Diplomacy to be a win-win, which is the preferred right, uh, route. Military conflict that will destroy the regime. When? I think he's going to do this in his first term. He told me yesterday, I'm not going to pass this on to anybody else. He thinks he's going to get reelected. So do I. But the one thing I can tell you, the North Koreans understand our electoral system. They wait every president out. Uh, they enter agreements and they back off and they run out the clock. They're trying to run out the clock on Trump. They're not going to run out the clock. Time is not on North Korea's side for the first time ever. What's next? I think what's next is to go back to China and say, what did you do? That meeting on the beach undercut everything. There would be no nuclear North Korea without China. He's going to go back to China. I think read them the riot act. If you want a peaceful conclusion to the North Korean problem, help me. If you keep playing this game that we played for 30 years, there's going to be a war in your backyard, not ours. And North Korea is going to lose. The president has made a decision. He cannot tolerate a nuclear North Korea that can hit the homeland with a nuclear tipped missile that they will sell whatever they build. He's going to bring this threat to an end, and he'd like to do it through diplomacy, a win-win for China, North Korea, South Korea, and the world at large. But it's coming to an end. It's not if the program ends, it's how. I hope through diplomacy there would be no nuclear North Korea without uh, China's help. There's not going to be peace without China's help. If there's going to be a war, it's going to, be, uh, it's going to end badly for North Korea. Do you look for sanctions to be ramped up? And if China does not cooperate, what are we supposed to do? Got to uh, if China and South Korea go wobbly, if the world goes wobbly on the maximum pressure campaign, you're putting Trump in a box. That's the worst possible thing you could do right now. Maximum pressure will continue. We'll try to re-engage the North Koreans. We're not going to beg them. This is not Obama. Uh, this is not John Kerry. This is Donald Trump. And he's already shown by pulling out of the Iranian deal, pulling out of the Paris summit and hitting Syria with rockets that he takes action. Good point. Thanks, How do you pull out of the Iran deal and do a bad deal right. with North Korea? You don't. All right, Senator, great to see you. More Fox and Friends in a moment. Diamond and Silk. Are you African-American? I don't, I don't understand the question. Hmm. Well, here are some quick headlines. Remember that lady, Rachel Dolezal? accused of lying again, this time for $9,000 in welfare benefits. Investigators say that she didn't report $84,000 in income and could face 15 years behind bars. The former NAACP leader previously made national headlines for lying about her race. 
And the school where students hosted a No Whites Allowed event is cutting its staff. According to campus reform officials at Evergreen State College have cut dozens of faculty positions and more layoffs could be coming. The school in Washington State is cutting its budget as enrollment drops. Meanwhile, in other news, the Trump campaign and the RNC have teamed up to take on Silicon Valley over alleged censorship of conservative voices you see online like social media stars Diamond and Silk. President Trump's 2020 campaign manager, Brad Parscale, saying on our show yesterday. We've had so much incoming about, you know, Diamond and Silk being blocked, other conservative voices. Every day I receive thousands of messages saying I'm being shadow banned. And what we want to do in this letter is to make sure that we understand what's happening. We want to ask them for transparency. I think the public deserves that transparency. And we need to know that conservative voices have a, a chance to get their message out. And here to react is social media, the social media stars and supporters of President Trump, Diamond and Silk. Hey, ladies, great to see you this morning. Hey, thank, great you. To see you. thank you. Thank you for having us. us. Of course. So what is your reaction to this? The RNC and President Trump's reelection campaign sending letters to Facebook and to Twitter, demanding some answers and, and demanding that Republicans or conservatives aren't censored. Well, you know what? We're glad to see the GOP and even the Trump campaign speaking out against um, conservative voices being censored by Facebook and some of these other social media platforms. Yeah. It's not fair for us to be censored. This is not a hoax. This is real. Mm -hmm. And this is all being done for um, the Democrats to win an election. We want to know why is Facebook interfering in an election That's right. by uh, doing these little tactics, by keeping people from seeing different content or keeping people from seeing your pages. So I'm glad glad that they're speaking out and we want transparency. Yes, we We're do. about to go into another election. We want transparency. We want this to be an even playing field across the board. And not to mention, we used to garner anywhere and reach anywhere from two to over what? Six million people per day. And now we only reach about what? 500,000. We're lucky if we can reach about 500,000 in a day. You know, if Mark Zuckerberg don't get it together, he will be the face without the book or the book without the page. <laughs> well, you know, uh, ladies, what they do is it, it's not like somebody is reviewing all the content. They have these geniuses out in Silicon Valley. They write these algorithms and the algorithms decide <clears throat> what is seen and what is not seen. But as Mark Zuckerberg himself said up on Capitol Hill, you know, Facebook is located in a very lefty part of the country. And so those are the people who are writing the algorithms. Well, yeah. see, maybe he needs to move in the middle of the country so uh -huh. it can be balanced. That's right. So you can't have liberals writing everything because it's going to be biased. That's right. They're going to thumb down conservative uh, voices, conservative content, and that's not fair to conservatives. We have a voice in this country, exactly. too. We have a voice on this platform, too, conservatives, and our voices have to be heard, too. All right. Lastly, uh, the NFL, in the middle of the, uh, the thunderstorm of news yesterday, uh, decided, not by unanimous vote, by the way, that uh, they will have a policy when it comes to the Pledge of Allegiance. Stay in the locker room if you can't stand. If you go out on the sideline, you better stand. What's your reaction? Well, you know what? I'm glad that the NFL is coming to their senses because they know that there was going to be no fans left. Mm -hmm. Listen, you have to stand for the flag. We want you to be patriotic because it's patriotic people that spend their money that's up right. there that's in the stands cheering you on and paying your salary. That's right. So that's why you need to stand. And well, you need to also stand to respect our veterans, to respect our flag, and to respect our country. Well, do you feel there's a problem with uh, race and law enforcement? That's the issue that they're taking a knee for. Well, wait a minute. If you want to take a knee, you can go down there and take a knee in Chicago. Because right. from what I heard, over 50, 60 some people done been shot up yeah. in Chicago by black people and not by officers. So if you want to take a knee, try Chicago, right. Baltimore, take a knee in those places and clean up some of those cities that's ran by Democrats. And why do the NFL continue to feed these grown men with kitty gloves? This is a job. This is a job description. If you don't like the job description, then get another job. That's right. All right. Uh, Diamond and Silk joining us from Diamond and Silk World Headquarters. Uh, by, <laughs> by, the, by the way, ladies, what do you do on Memorial Day? How do you celebrate? Going out on a picnic I, or what? I'm going to eat barbecue, probably be at the parents' house eating on something, eating food. <laughs> That's right. And we're going to be paying tribute to all of our veterans. Right. We love you all. Yes. All right. Very good. Ladies, thank you very much. Have a wonderful Thanks, holiday ladies. weekend. Thank you. All right. Uh, meanwhile, straight ahead on our Friday telecast, a high school prom gets cut short after this. <laughs> 
Wow. Uh, the dramatic moments caught on camera. Who's driving that boat? Ooh, what that's seniors? That's going to be expensive to fix. Plus, we are kicking off our summer concert series live on an even bigger boat, the Intrepid, the Intrepid Museum. Abby Huntsman is there now. Abby? Good morning. Only on Fox and Friends do you get Army and Navy so close together. I can't remember who won football this year. <laughs> it doesn't matter. Coming up on the show, we've got a live performance, Lee Grimley, but also president of the Intrepid Museum. A lot to learn. We are coming up right after this. We'll see you in a few seconds. You don't get much higher than that, do you? Thank you, Donald. I voted for you. Well, it is our Friday shot of the morning. The World War II vet who just got his college diploma now getting the attention of President Trump. The commander in chief writing 96 year old Bob Barger in Ohio after hearing his incredible story, which we told you about earlier this month. The president writing, quote, your hard work, diligence and passion to learn exemplify the greatest generation's commitment to excellence and the American spirit. Wow. And uh, he's traveling the country talking about his uh, his experiences. The former Navy pilot left the University of Toledo 68 years ago after the war. But recently he had enough credits for an associate's <laughs> degree. So therefore he's celebrating it. You're never too old. He's a graduate indeed. And he wound up with the presidential note and as he was revealing in that video, it sounds like he voted for the president. It too. does. It does. He's very appreciative. We appreciate his service. Thank you. You do indeed. All right. Uh, meanwhile, today we are kicking off the summer concert series live from the Intrepid Museum during Fleet Week. And our own Abby Huntsman is there live. Abby. Hey, Abby. Good morning, Ainsley, Brian, and Steve. It is a beautiful morning here. I'm with Susan Marinoff, who's the president of the Intrepid Museum. Also, Colonel Hartman, who's with us as well, and a bunch of Navy and Army behind us. I want to start, though, with you, Susan. Uh, where we're standing right now, we are on the top deck of the Intrepid. It used to be an active aircraft carrier, right? Give us a little history. Absolutely. It was commissioned in 1943. It served in World War II and the Cold War, three tours in Vietnam, and it was a recovery vessel for two, both a Gemini and a Mercury mission in the space or in, in the space program. Wow, so people come from all over the world here to see this intrepid museum. What are they going to find? What are they going to learn? You know, we're the only museum that has a nuclear launching uh, submarine that's open to the public in the entire world. Um, they have, we have a space shuttle, the Enterprise, the very first orbiter. But of course, the artifact, the best artifact itself is the Intrepid Museum. So we've taken what is this incredible ship and we've made her a museum so that we can teach from our history and from our artifacts, we can teach our future generations about heroism of these great folks mm -hmm. that are behind us, their predecessors, um, and all of the technology uh, advancements that we've made and science and, and, and engineering and math and everything that you can learn from this beautiful ship and all the things we're continuing to do so much history on the ship ship you think about serving world war ii the vietnam war colonel hartman we're here because of fleet week this right. week so give give the american people a sense of what fleet week is well yeah, obviously it's for the navy my dad served in the navy during korea so i have great respect for for the navy but we did win a recent football game so oh. i guess i guess I guess that's why, you know, Victor is spoils. Navy, I, I don't hear Navy back there. <laughs> okay. okay, uh, okay. Uh, it's, the re it's the recent win that counts. What have you done lately? <laughs> All right. But, you know, f overall for the Memorial Day weekend, it's always an opportunity. You have to remember the men and women who came before you, the commitment and sacrifice of them and their families, their losses. And it's an opportunity for all of us to really connect with the American public. I can say since 9-11, since the American public has been great for all of us. I think when you've been in an airport or a restaurant, the people have been very, very friendly, very open open to us yeah. and it's, so it's an opportunity always to connect with them and only about one percent of the population serves in the armed forces so it's important for us to really develop that connection every chance we get yeah. so there's, there's so many things that that come to mind during memorial day but it's really about commitment and sacrifice of the men and women who came before yeah. you and a reminder of how many of our amazing men and women are still doing that right. every exactly. single day all over the world right yeah. exactly how often do you get army and navy this close together not too often <laughs> not too often although this is a good friendly uh, bunch yeah, yeah. Well, and, they, and they come to new york because it's just a, it's a good time, yeah, right? The, the weekend, they, they can actually interact with me. By the way, if you're in the tri-state area and you see uh, any of these folks walking around in, in their whites, Buy them a cup of coffee. Buy them a beer. Right. Get to know them. I don't know how to keep the stuff so white. I, I, I think somebody has a Tide pen or whatever it is. I don't. I have a hard time. Yes, we, we were at the restaurant late uh, re last night, uh, talking to some folks and at the hotel. So it's been a very friendly group, and yeah. everybody comes together at the right time for the right moments. Great. We all understand what it's all about, really. I have a feeling a lot of people had all-nighters last night. 
behind me. <laughs> you are troopers to be up with us this morning. Later on the show, we're going to have Lee Greenwood on. He's going to be performing God Bless USA. It's a beautiful morning here in Manhattan on top of the Intrepid. So we're going to be here coming up shortly. Steve Ainsley and Brian. As you can see, I'm in very good company. You are you indeed. Are. And you've never been safer. Shot. Exactly. Yeah, right. that's true. It's so pretty to see all <laughs> the people who have fought patient. for our country. And then you see <laughs> America. You see these skyscrapers in New York City behind you. Man. That is freedom. What is company Man. policy? Does Abby have to report to work first or can she go right to the Intrepid? Do we know? Uh, she came here first to pick oh, really? up her information packet and other data. Oh, uh, okay. So just uh, keep that in mind, Julian, if you're ever on the Intrepid, you got to come to work first. Some people might Punch call in. this questioning like a little stalkerish, Brian. I'm getting concerned. <laughs> <laughs> a little? A you little. need to know where Abby is every second uh, of the morning. I, I have problems. <laughs> you know that. You don't know yes. what goes on. That's, That's for here. another time. Yes. Right. Good morning. Let's get you caught up on some of your headlines this morning, starting with this. A suspected MS-13 gang member accused of brutally killing a man entered the U.S. as an unaccompanied alien child. Police arresting Franklin, Franklin Patero Rodriguez near Charleston, South Carolina. The once deported illegal is accused of shooting a man in Texas, then setting his car on fire with the victim locked inside the trunk. Police finding him with a loaded pistol, which may have been used in the murder. He is facing several charges. An armed man turns into a hero when he shoots and kills a gunman on a rampage. Police say the Good Samaritan pulled out a pistol and stopped the gunman in the parking lot after he shot a mother and her daughter inside Lowy's on Lake in Oklahoma City. The family celebrating a birthday when they were attacked. Both are expected to survive. Two other people are hurt. The shooting appears to be random. We'll talk about crashing the party. How about this? A high school prom is cut short after the yacht they were on rams into a docked boat in the Hudson River. I don't know if oops will cover that one. None of the nearly 100 students and staff were on board uh, were who were on board were hurt. The crash in New Jersey is under investigation right now. All right, just listen to this story. This is crazy. A mother expecting triplets gets the surprise of her life when doctors deliver a fourth baby. Yes, a Texas woman giving birth to two boys and two girls. The extra baby was hiding behind her siblings during the ultrasounds. Three of the infants are named Tristan, Eric, and Claire. The family's still deciding on the fourth because, you know, they planned for three. Uh, the newborns have three older siblings. The youngest you ever to play hide and seek. How sweet is that? That's what a great insane. surprise. Like, it's, I would imagine tough enough to have three babies, let alone, oh, by the way, there's a fourth. I know. We need to start a GoFundMe page. We need to buy a new crib. We have to buy they more diapers. They have seven diapers. children. I know. They, the, they probably have a crib. The yeah, six would have been easy, but the seventh puts me over the top. Oh, all right. Hey, Jillian, thank you very much. Good for them, families. Yeah. All right. Uh, meanwhile, during Fleet Week, uh, we've got a lot of people who are coming to New York. Yes. Janice, and it looks like today's going to be beautiful, but tomorrow maybe. A little iffy. It, listen, it's not going to be a washout, but this is what happens on Memorial Day here in New York. We have a chance of showers on Saturday and Sunday. Monday looks okay, a little cooler, and then Tuesday, uh, ne much nicer. But I want to focus on Florida and the southeast because we could have Tropical Storm Alberto forming in the Gulf of Mexico in the next 24 to 48 hours. I know already hurricane season. Uh, regardless of if it gets a name or not, we're going to be talking about incredible amounts of rain for Florida, the southeast, up towards the mid-Atlantic. So just be prepared. Be be weather aware and know what you're going to do if there's a flash flood watcher warning in your area. There's your forecast today. Not too bad. 87 here in New York for our sailors and Marines. You have buy a, him good a beer. Voice. You have a good voice. Fleet buy Week him, Friday. Buy him a beer. You said yesterday the Ducies do this. Whenever and we're in a restaurant during Fleet Week and we see um, uniform personnel, we always. Send them anonymously, cheers. either buy their dinner or uh, send them. That is drink. so nice. I like gotta, the Ducies. I like that. them too. Anyway, right. the on. least we can Pay do for a great country. All right, all right. 18 minutes before the top of the hour, New York Governor Andrew Cuomo just gave thousands of parolees the right to vote. One of them, this convicted cop killer, the widow of one of the officers he murdered, joins us with a message for the governor next. Plus, Anthony Scaramucci is going to be joining us on the Friday telecast along with Corey Lewandowski, Judge Janine, and Geraldo Rivera. Put down the remote. It's Fleet Week live from New York City. Greenville in the middle of a hayfield, but a but like truck.
Please get up. Hope you're dressed. The scandals just keep on piling up as we give you this news update. And it's happening for Facebook. You have a failed startup company is suing the social media giant, accusing it of reading text, tracking locations, and listening to conversations through mobile apps. Facebook denies the claims. And is junk food just as dangerous as cigarettes? The whole point of this country is if you want to eat garbage, balloon up to 600 pounds, and die of a heart attack at 43, you can. You are free to do so. To me, that's beautiful. It's in the Bill of Rights. Researchers now suggesting junk food come with graphic, tobacco-style warnings on packaging. A new study finds that warning labels prompt people to use more self-control. That's why I haven't had a ring ding. Steve? All right, uh, Brian, thank you very much. New York Governor Andrew Cuomo has issued conditional pardons, restoring voting rights to more than 24,000 parolees. The long list includes convicted cop killer Herman Bell, who was released from prison in April and put on parole. Bell was convicted of brutally murdering two New York City Police Department officers, Officer Joseph Piangentini and his uh, partner, Officer Waverly Jones, in a 1971 shooting in Harlem. Joining us right now with her thoughts on the governor's uh, latest move is the widow of that police officer, Diane Pigian, Piangentini. Good morning to you, Diane. Good morning. All right. When you, I, I'm sure you were shocked when your husband's killer, first of all, got parole earlier in the spring. But then when you heard that uh, Governor Cuomo had given that, this cop killer the right to vote as well. What was your impression? How could he do something like that? This is a convicted felon. He killed two police officers in New York, went back to California and killed Sergeant uh, John Young in California. He gets convicted in New York for killing, tried and convicted, 25 years to life. You know, there are a lot of people here in New York, after uh, the governor did this, he's, they said, look, it's political. Uh, the urge of, uh, you know, he's on the verge of becoming the nominee for governor here in the Empire State once again. He's doing it for votes. Exactly. I agree with that. He is doing it for votes. He did it right before the, the Democratic Convention. But he's giving his right to a cop killer. Yes, and that should never have happened. And Bell should never have gotten out of prison. We have Anthony Bottom coming up in June, and he needs to be denied parole. There's but to give them the right to vote, they haven't served their full terms, and they don't deserve the right to vote. All right, Diane, we're looking at images from your wedding day. Tell us about your husband. Um, my husband was a very strong, compassionate, and loving man. And um, it was the love of my life. And today I'm here to represent him. I've been standing, you know, every two years before that parole board just to keep them in prison for what they did. I mean, you can see how handsome he was and the light in his eyes and the smile that he had. I can see the smile on your face talking yes. about him. It's gotta be heartbreaking what uh, the governor did. We thank you very much for coming in though and okay. telling your story. All right, thank you. Thank you. All right. Coming up, NASCAR is gearing up to honor our fallen heroes this weekend at the Coca-Cola 600. Heather Childers is here with an exclusive look at the pre-race show. She's over in, and uh, we've got Janice in Pure Corner. One of NASCAR's biggest races happening this weekend, the Coca-Cola 600 taking place ahead of Memorial Day as the racing world looks to tip its hat to our fallen heroes and honor the legacy they've left behind. And in their pre-race show, they'll do just that with a message, with a massive demonstration from some of the Army's finest infantry and paratrooper divisions. All right, Fox & Friends first host Heather Childers has stayed for us. She got an exclusive look at what they, what will it all look like this Yeah, week. it's going to be amazing. They do this every year. I, I had down to Fort Bragg, North Carolina with last year's Coca-Cola champion Austin Dillon for an inside look of Sunday's big event. Check this out. Wow, that's so heavy. This will be quite the workout just walking around in this. I could do squats. <laughs> Mounted on here, this is a fully automatic grenade launcher. You shoot grenades to a distance about 2,212 meters. So, pretty powerful weapon. Austin, you're driving a special car for the Coke 600. 
go. We know that uh, there are a few race fans on property. So here's a thousand tickets. Wow. We would love to have them feel loved and honored. What does it mean to you that the NASCAR is so supportive to people that are in the military, their families? We can build monuments. We can throw out, thanks for your service, thanks for doing this. But this is an actual practical example that we are appreciated. In on Memorial Day, when we're remembering our, our fallen, uh, I think uh, I think you couldn't do much more. We've always been big supporters of our military. They're the reason why we get to race on the weekends. Anytime you can go out there and, and ride with the military men and women, enjoy just what they do on a day-to-day -day basis and learn more about what they do, it's uh, very special. Thank we appreciate you so having much. you down here. No way. Wow. Wow. We're not doing that. We generally repel them between 70 and 90 feet, and you have to do everything proper because there is nobody down there to catch it. Oh, goodness. Nope. All right, let's do it. We're going to do it one way or the other. How high is this again? 42 foot. 42 foot. Okay. So I guess I'm next. Oh, my goodness. What am I doing? Oh, oh my gosh. I don't know if I can do this. You can. Want to look down? Get to who? Oh, on repel. Okay. okay, just lean back. Yep. Uh, there's no way I can get bashing into the wall for no. real. Keep this okay. hand behind you, you won't go nowhere now. Lean back. Mm -hmm. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. You're, you're almost there. It's a lot easier than you think it is. Yeah, there you go. Yeah. You got this. <laughs> Holy cow. <laughs> We made it. I think you guys did it for me though. <laughs> Thank you. Woo. Good, bro. All right. Oh, Mark that done. <laughs> Unreal, that and we, scary, yeah, it was so scary. Brain. I was legit scared. And um, we will get to see much more, of course, from the Army in their pre-race show Sunday at six, and it airs right here on Fox. It's the hardest Excellent. part, just the beginning, Going when you have to lean back to nothing. into nothing. Yeah, step. you know, but teamwork. You got to rely on your yeah, teammates. Yeah, you're right. So. You're right. Good right. job. Thank Thanks you. for going down there. All right. Uh, meanwhile, four minutes before the top of the hour, the summit may be off, but President Trump is leaving the door open for talks with North Korea. Is the whole world seeing the art of the deal at work? Anthony Scaramucci, who worked for the president.